Amen. Come on and let's praise God. Hallelujah. 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 We glorify the Lord on this morning. He is just so wonderful. Amen. We want to go into prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We glorify and magnify your holy name. We ask your Lord that you will send forth your help and your deliverance in the midst of this service. Bless each and everything that shall be done to thy glory. We ask it now in Jesus' name. Amen. By way of announcement on today at 5 o'clock p.m., amen, Solid Rock, we will uh, be joining um, Jesus is the Only Way Apostolic Faith Church. It is the ninth pastoral and church anniversary of Pastor Wilbert Sims. Amen. All right, and we will also be streaming this service live on our Facebook page. All right, so you all can see us on our Facebook page, amen, and some of us will be attending the actual building, but not all of us. Also, by way of announcement, let us all get excited. We have had another, um, I don't want to call it a promotion, but an elevation, amen, in the midst of us. Uh, Minister Michelle Brown is now Evangelist Woo! Michelle Brown. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. So she has done the things that she needed to do. Amen. And now she is licensed as an evangelist. All right. So she is also a part of our evangelistical um, team there. All right, so we praise God for her and what he has done in elevating her in the ministry. Amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, amen. Amen. We're getting ready to go and glorify the Lord and lift him up. Amen. As we shall continue to do. Amen. I hope you came ready on today. We're going to put you in the hands of our praise and worship team. Amen. As they take us a little bit further. Bless the praise and worship team. What a 
Amen. I want to read quite a bit of your hearing. Amen. On this morning, try to help you grasp. Amen. What I'm talking about, or we'll be talking about today. Hallelujah. Acts the 26th chapter, verses 1 to 23, after which I'm going to jump down to verse 26. Amen. Through 28. Acts 26 chapter, beginning at verse 1. And the Bible said, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself, 
I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee of touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be an expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear my hear me patiently. My, my manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among my own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judge for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our 12 tribes instantly serving God day and night hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? I rarely thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, which thing I also did in Jerusalem. And many of the saints did I shut, did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. And I punished them oft in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midnight, O king, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a, a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the prick. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness before these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an in inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but shoot forth first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these causes, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than that which the prophets and Moses say should come. Verse 26. For the king knoweth of these things, before whom also I speak freely, for I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Amen, amen. I'd like to go back to verse twenty. Six. Let me see here. I'm going to go to verse 9 and then 26. I really thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 26. For the king knoweth of these things before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. Amen. I like to use for a topic, you can be so wrong about what you think is right. Amen. You can be so wrong about what you think is right. 
And for a subtopic, I want to use this thing was not done in a corner. Ah. Subtopic, this thing was not done in a corner. Amen. You can be so wrong about what you think is right, and this thing was not done in a corner. Hallelujah. My God. Amen. There has been times that I'm sure a lot of us can think about where we have made some wrong decisions, wrong choices. We've thought about some things in the wrong way, but we thought it was actually right. There have been times that perhaps you have accused someone of doing something that they actually didn't do, but you thought you were so right. Amen. And you brought it to their attention and only to find out that you were wrong and they never did what you thought they had done. It's something like this. Perhaps you had your phone and you were on your cell phone and you know you put your cell phone down somewhere and perhaps you put a piece of paper over top of it and it was you and one of your children that you tell not to touch your cell phone and not to play with your phone. All right, and so you go back to find your phone and you see that your phone is not where you think you left it. And immediately you began to think that perhaps the child that you told not to touch the phone has touched the phone and may now have lost your phone and you don't know where your phone is. So you then began to accuse the child, uh, you must have had taken my phone because it was only you and me in this, in this house or in this room. So you're the only one that had to have taken my phone. And now you're scolding the child, thinking that the child have taken your phone and now perhaps have lost your phone. And perhaps you beat the child because you really believe that what you think is right, when in actuality it is wrong. And then only to find, uh, as you go back in the room and you begin to perhaps move some things around and you find that your phone is beneath a piece of paper that you only suddenly laid down but did not know that you had laid it on top of your phone. All right? You thought you were right, but you were so wrong. You can be so wrong about what you think is right. right. And now, there has been times, amen, in others' lives where perhaps you have met someone and instantaneously you thought some things about this person that you knew nothing concerning, but you uh, already have come to conclusions in your mind as to how that individual is. Only to go and find out that they're not like that at all. But you already was treating them in such a way that you thought they were. Amen. Somebody can say amen if you've ever done that before. Amen. Right there in those comments. Amen. Amen. You can be so wrong about what you think is right. And sometimes you're having a conversation with people and you are so adamant about what you think and what you believe. I know that happens to be me sometimes because if I believe a thing, it's going to be very hard for you to uh, get me to switch and change my mind. You're going to have a battle. Sometimes you might have to call on Jesus. <laughs> All right? I'm just telling you the truth. That's because I believe it to be so. All right? And if I believe this, but if you can prove that I'm wrong, I will accept the fact that I'm wrong. All right? All right, and so sometimes we have done those things and we were adamant about what we were saying. We believe what we were saying only to find out that what we thought was right was actually wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we had to go back and we had to say, well, I thought I was right, but I was wrong. I hope that you don't just insist that you're going to still say I'm right because you don't want to be the lower man and you don't want to lose some of your pride to say that the other individual is right. If they're right, they're right, and you have to say that they are. All right, well, you should. You should. You can be so wrong with what you think that what, what you think is right. All right, so a lot of us, or most of us, have found ourselves in that very situation. The thing about it is, some people go so deep with some things uh, that they really think that they are right in. And I'm going to say this. Let's use racism. There are really some people that actually think that colored people are beneath them. They were trained that way, they were taught that way, they were brought up that way. And because of their upbringing, because of their upbringing, that is why they do what they do, they say what they say, and they believe what they believe. So when they treat you the way they treat you, they feel as though they have a right to treat you that way and they don't think it's wrong. Mm -hmm. And I know that's hard for some of us to, to comprehend, but it's the truth. Just, just hold on and hang on in there with me for a little bit, and I hope I can get you to understand better as I continue to go. It is the truth. And they feel that way, and that's why they are not convicted. 
They believe that you are lesser than a human. So when they treat you lesser than a human, they don't feel bad about that because they feel like that's what you should get because you're actually less than what they are. All right? It does not make them right, but they do need to be enlightened. I'm just trying to get you to a place where you can understand that all of us at some point, maybe not as deeply as others, but all of us for the most part have been caught in situations where we actually thought we were right about something when we were wrong. Amen. We were all together wrong about it. All right, and so sometimes it just takes the understanding of why people do things to help you not to have that sense of bitterness yes. that it would breed inside of you if you did not understand where they were coming from. That is not to say that they're not wrong. They are wrong. But to understand why they are wrong and why they think and feel the way they do would help you to understand that they're in a place where they need to be enlightened so I don't have to have all this bitterness inside of me concerning the individual because they really don't know. Amen. Yes. Mm. They really don't know. Uh, they need to be enlightened to what the truth is. The Bible declares that you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Yes. But I want you to know that the truth doesn't only make you free spiritually, but it makes you free mentally, emotionally. It makes you free physically. A lot of times, just when you get to know the truth. Right. Mm. The truth can set your mind free. Uh, the truth can set your emotions free. The truth can deliver your physical body from some sicknesses that you were only sick because you did not know the truth. Amen. Oh, it'll make you free. The truth will do it. So, you really can be so wrong about what you think. Is right. And so we see here the mighty man by the name of Paul after meeting Jesus. Saul before. And Saul here has been in prison. Yes. Saul have now met Jesus on the road to Damascus. But he tells us about his life story prior to him getting to where Jesus would meet him. And uh, as he stands before Agrippa as a prisoner, he just wants to give Agrippa some of his background history. And now Paul was one that grew up, as they would say, in the right way. Yeah. Paul's family was a family that was a free family in Rome. Yeah. In Rome. And we found that out on one occasion when they had also locked him up. Yeah. And what they were doing, Paul was saying to them, was it right for them to do that to one that was a Roman yeah. citizen? Ah, and so he knew who he was, but he didn't take what he was uh, and use it for the sake of Christ. He actually put those things to the side. And he didn't try to pump his own stuff up, uh, but he had to let some time people know. Uh, he had to let them know some time where he came from. Uh, so they wouldn't just think uh, that he was like everybody else. Uh, he wanted them to know our words was just like you. Amen. My God. And so here, as I said, Paul now stands before Agrippa. And Agrippa, he knows a whole lot about the law. And Paul began to say about the Jews that was around about in the council that was watching and listening to what he had to say. Uh, he was saying, well, I grew up amongst these people. 
I said so wrong. You can be so wrong. And that's why we got to be very careful huh, about the judgmentalness. Huh? Amen. Because if we look back in our own lives, huh, you might not have gone to greater extent as others have. Huh? But you have been wrong about some things that you really thought you was right in. Huh? Amen. And had God done all kinds of things to you, where would you be today? Huh? I see Jesus hanging up on the cross. Huh? Oh, Lord, have mercy. Huh? And what he said while he was on the cross was so true. Huh? He said, Father, forgive them. Huh? For they know not what they do. Huh? They really didn't know it. Huh? They really believed he wasn't the Christ. Huh? And that's why they crucified him. Huh? It was because they were blind. Huh? And they really didn't want to see. Huh? And he said, forgive them, uh, for they know not what they do. Yes, yes, yes. They think they're right, yes. but they're so wrong. Yes. That lets you know that people will harm you, believing that harming you is the right thing to do. Yes. When they are so wrong. Mm -hmm. They are so wrong. People can misjudge you. And think things about you never really met you before. I don't know. I don't know. It's just something about them. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't like them. Why you don't like them? I don't know why I don't like them, but I don't like them. Mm -hmm. Just something about them. And then they meet you. Like, oh my Lord, I didn't even know you was like that. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, you're so sweet, you're so kind. I didn't even know you like that. I had people say, I thought you was mean. You just looked at my face. You just thought of me. And then they get to meet you. Oh, you're not like that at all. Uh -huh. You got to get to know the person. You can't perceive preconceived notions, preconceived notions, and judge people by preconceived notions. You could be so wrong about what you think is right. You're wrong. And you respond to it in that way when you are wrong. That's right. right. My God. And I don't know about anybody else, but that's a bad thing, especially if you're doing something wrong about somebody. You know, like I talk about that, that phone situation, and you just know the person must have had it. They had it. Yeah. What did you do with my phone? Didn't I tell you not to mess with my phone? And the poor child was like, I didn't have the phone. You had the phone, because the phone is missing, and me and you are the only two people in here with the phone. Find out you, the phone is on the paper. He could be so wrong about what you think is right. He had them killed, but he thought it was right. He had them blaspheming, but he thought it was right. He went from city to city, hunting them down, because he thought it was right, but he was so wrong. They had to run for their lives. I mean, this serious stuff. This serious stuff. This is a person that did all of this. And yes, when we would have seen it and known that we were just the blood of Jesus, this is a terrible person. Who would not have thought he was a terrible person? That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. you, you would have thought he was a terrible person being used by the devil and all of that. And I can't say he wasn't being used by the devil, but he actually thought that he was doing the right thing. I'm not saying he wasn't being used by the devil. I'm not saying the devil wasn't using his beliefs against him. Yeah. I'm not saying he wasn't. But he didn't know that what was going on. He really thought he was doing the right thing. And he meets up with Jesus as he's telling Agrippa here, King Agrippa. And he meets up with Jesus along the way. And Jesus arrests him. In other words, more or less, Jesus is saying enough is enough. Yes. That's enough of that. You trying to fight against me, so you fighting my people to fight me. But it's hard for you to kick against the prick. The prick will hurt you before you hurt the prick. You can't stop what's going on. You trying to run them after them here, run after them there, but it's still spreading. You can't stop this. Yes, yes. See, they thought they could stop it when they killed Jesus, but what they really did is they made it explode. Yes. And when a thing explodes, it goes all over the place. See, for a while it was kind of centralized, yes. kind of in a pocket. And that's really what they would have wanted it to do and just swash it while it was in the pocket. But they didn't understand that if I kill this man, yes. my God, I'm going to have a whole lot of them popping up all over the place. I can't get rid of them. 
I can't get rid of them. It's going to spread like the plague. It's going to spread. It's going to spread far. And it's going to spread wide. You understand? And anybody that will just believe in the name of Jesus and do what the word tells them to do, they'll be saved and delivered. Huh? Going down in Jesus' name and being filled with the Spirit of God, speaking in other tongues, huh? as the Spirit gives them utterance, huh? if they'll just take it upon themselves, huh? I'm going to lose them, I'm going to make them free, and I'm going to tell them, go into all the world huh? and tell everybody else huh? what the Lord has done, huh? how he saved My God, that thing started spreading all over the place. Oh, Lord, it upset the city. Huh? And the Bible said that the apostles turned the world upside down. Huh? Amen. They didn't know what in the world was going on. We thought we got rid of them. Now they popping up here and popping up there. Now they coming to the temple and healing people and raising them up at the temple and coming on in the temple and the man jumping and shouting and, and the people coming running because they know that the man was like that from his mother's womb and they want to know what happened and then they start telling them about Jesus. Uh, see this thing was not done in the corner nah. Oh they tell them about Jesus uh, Ain't got a nail so wrapped up in it uh, And the chief priest get word And they run on down there And they like wait a minute hold up what's going on And they look at the man And they know the man themselves And, and they upset because they looking at uh, Peter and John and They like what in the world What in the world huh? They like y'all coming over here Come on over here Y'all coming in here talk to us What in the world What, what is going on What is going on what y'all doing? And they tell them that they did it in Jesus' name. And, and you know, as soon as they said Jesus' name, it, it just struck a chord in them because they thought they crucified him. Uh, but what they didn't understand, uh, oh, yes, he came back again just like he said he would. Uh, but not only did he come back uh, just like he said he would, uh, he had also risen in them. Uh, and because you thought you killed him, uh, he going to give life. Uh, and that more abundantly, uh, he going to spread all over this place. Uh, and you're not going to be able to stop. Because it's not going to be done in a corner. Not going to be done in a corner. So you tried to hide it. Huh? Paul tried to snuff it out. Huh? Oh, but he couldn't snuff it out. Huh? He thought he was doing something right. Huh? But he was doing something wrong. Huh? But the Lord was letting him know you ain't going to be able to snuff this out. Huh? I'm going to keep this out in the open. Huh? I'm going to keep it wide. Because huh? I want them to see what I've done. Huh? I want them to see, want them to see who I am. Huh? I want them to realize huh? that I am God. Huh? And God alone. Huh? I want them to understand huh? that they ain't no other name. Huh? Given under heaven. Huh? Whereby huh? they must be saved. Huh? They got to come huh? through the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. They preached it. And the Bible said that they took they took Peter and John and they beat them. No, no, they, didn't beat. they took them and they threatened them. And then they threatened them again. And said, y'all better not preach in his name. And y'all better not teach in his name. And they looked at them and they said, look. Y'all judge. Which is right for us to obey you or to obey God. So y'all already have the answer. Y'all already know what we're going to do. If you let us out of here, you understand what I'm saying? If you let us out of here, you better know what's going to happen. We're going to keep spreading this thing. Yeah. And we're going to spread this thing. So people had heard it over in other cities and all of that. This thing had gone broad. This thing had gone wide. Huh? So many people had heard how they crucified Jesus. Huh? How Jesus rose from the grave. Huh? Heard about his disciples. Huh? They heard about it. Huh? People had also heard huh? how Paul had defected huh? from being the way he was. Huh? And now they were calling him a Christian. Huh? Now he was preaching Jesus Christ huh? and him crucified. God, huh? It was not done in the corner huh? because the Bible tells us huh? that after Paul got saved, huh? immediately huh? he began to preach Christ huh? and him crucified. Huh? He preached in Jerusalem, huh? he preached in Judea, huh? he preached among his own kind, huh? but they were jealous, huh? they were mad. 
Paul was letting them know, letting Agrippa know, after he had already said, Agrippa, I know, amen, that you are an expert in all of the Jewish customs and questions. Amen, you're an expert in these things. He said, and I know, Agrippa, that this thing is not hidden from you. You know all about it. Amen, and there was a man by the name of Festus that got upset when Paul was preaching and talking about Jesus Christ and how he was delivered and how the Lord turned his life around. And he hollered out loud, Paul! You are mad, huh? Much learning, huh? Don't make me mad, huh? And Paul said to him, huh? Most noble fastest, huh? I am not mad, huh? But he declared unto them, huh? A word of God, huh? And he said to Agrippa, huh? He said, Agrippa, you know, huh? You already know about it, huh? Because it wasn't done in the corner, huh? He said, I know, huh? He said, don't you believe the prophets, huh? He said, I know you do, huh? And Agrippa looked at Paul, huh? And he said, Paul, huh? You almost, huh? Persuading me now nah, to be a Christian now. Nah. In other words, ha, you right on. Ha, you got this thing right. Ha. And then afterwards, ha, he told Festus, ha, this man ha, would have been set free ha, if he had not ha, appealed on the season. Nah, that might have went on ha, and let him go. Ha. And Festus, ha, I said, Festus, ha, the one that thought Paul ha, might have lost his mind nah, or just hollered out. Ha. He heard uh, also what Paul uh, had to say. Uh, it wasn't done in the corner. Uh, God didn't try to hide it. Uh, and I come to tell you today, uh, God uh, is not trying to hide uh, that you can be saved, uh, that you can be delivered, uh, that you can be set free. Uh, God uh, wants you to know who uh, Jesus, uh, that will carry. Uh, he said, come uh, unto me. Uh, all you that labor uh, and are heavy laden. Uh, and I, uh, I'll give you rest. Uh, take my yoke uh, upon you. Uh, learn of me, uh, for my yoke is easy uh, and my bread is a lie. Uh, why don't you come? Uh, why don't you come? Uh, you may be one of those uh, that think you were right, uh, but you were so wrong. Uh, but because of that, uh, God wants you to know uh, he loves you. Uh, he loves you. Uh, oh, yes, he does. Because some people, they feel like, ha, I already mistreated those people, ha, I already talked about those people, ha, I already did things to those people, ha, and I don't deserve to be saved, ha, but I just told you about a man, ha, who held these people to prison, ha, gave testimony about these people, ha, and had these people killed, ha, he done those people wrong, ha, but God, ha, I said, God, ha, he saved him, ha, he changed his life, ha, and he went about, ha, preaching about the same one, ha, that he was against, ha, because he came to the truth, ha, and the truth, ha, it made him free. Yes. It'll do the same for you. It'll do the same for you. God loves you just that much. That he's willing to put all those things that you did in the sea of forgetfulness to remember them no more, to forgive you for all of your sins. That's how wonderful the God we serve is. Amen. But Paul, of course, he didn't forget those things. And I'm sure he continued to grieve him here and there, but he knew he was a free man now. There was a time that he actually thought he was free when he was bound. But now he was free, yeah. even in those chains that he was in. And so when Agrippa told him, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. And Paul said to him, I would, that not only you, but everybody that's in here, were almost and all together, even as I am, except these chains that I have on right now. I wish that all of y'all were free. I wish that all of you would become a Christian, Christ-like. For they called them Christians in Antioch. Well, that's the same as though they didn't know really what to call them. So they started calling them Christians. A Christian just means to be Christ-like. A lot of people call themselves Christians, but they're not Christian at all. Christ-like. To be like Christ. To be like Christ. Somebody ought to want to be like him today. Yes. When Paul found out the truth, he wanted to be like him. He gave up everything to be like him. He gave up his prestige. 
to know him, to get close to him. He was willing for people to start looking down on him like he looked down on others. He was willing to do it. He said, I want to know him in the power of his might and the fellowship of his sufferings. He didn't just want to know him in the power of his might, but also in the fellowship of his sufferings. He wanted to know him. Somebody ought to want to know the Lord today. Somebody ought to want to surrender their life over to the Lord today. Somebody ought to say, Lord, it's me, oh Lord, it's me, it's me. I've been so wrong, thinking that I was so right. But I was wrong about what I thought was right. Whether it's been a religious experience situation, spiritual experience situation, other things in your life, type of situations where you could have been so wrong, thinking you were so right. Now is the time to make amends. Now is the time to change directions. Turn and go the right way. Don't let the devil fool you and say, well, you've got to keep being like this because this is how everybody knows you to be. And if you change, the ones that you are in cahoots with, maybe the upper shallant people, those that say that you're in the class with them and everything else and everyone else is beneath you, I have to tell you, that might be true. You may lose those friends, but it's worth it to gain Christ. Yes. It's worth it to do the right thing. Yes. Continuing to do the wrong thing is not going to get you in the right place. It's time to change direction and go in the right direction that the Lord is now pointing you in, just like he did with Saul. He pointed him in the right direction. But Saul took a hold to that and he did with obedience according to the voice of the Lord. Will you obey him today? Will you obey him today? Because today I kind of wrestled just a little or so with that topic. But I was pushed to say that topic in that way. You can be so wrong about what you think is right. Be so wrong. So wrong. But you really thought it was right. But you were so wrong. You've been into it for a long time. But you were so wrong. And the Lord is letting you know today. You were wrong. Turn. If you've been meddling in witchcraft, turn. Demonic stuff, turn. It's wrong. It's not right. It's the wrong direction. Turn to the right direction. Turn to the Lord. While you hear his voice, while he's calling after you, while he's prompting you to turn away from the ungodly things. Those things are not of God. Going and getting turn cards read is not of God. Getting your palm read is not of God. You're seeking to find out your future when God himself holds your future in his hand. God is saying to you to turn. I know you think it's all right, but it's not right, it's wrong. It's time to turn. You're caught up in some stuff, mystical stuff that you have no business in. God said, come out of that, come out of it, come out of it, come out of it, come out of it. Come out of it. It's not the right thing. Somebody got you involved with it, but it's wrong. It's not right. And you already been having a sense that something ain't right about it, but you can stand in it anyhow. But God said, come out today. Come out. Come out. And come all the way out. Come all the way out. And let God take you by the hand. Let God take you by the hand. Understand this. God knows your future. And if you want to know your future, ask the Lord. Ask your creator. And he will let you know your future. You don't need nobody to read your palm. You ask the one that created you. Because he knows what he designated for your life. That's where you turn. That's where you turn. Jesus hung on that cross just to save you. To save me. See, he didn't just categorize who he was going to save, but he died to save an entire world. Though we know the entire world would not be saved because everybody is not going to choose him. 
and everybody won't believe. He has already called you today. He said, come. He said, come, but he won't make you come. He always leaves the choice up to you. Will you come to Jesus while you still have time? Because that's been many times when God has reached out with his voice and he has called to mankind and he has brought it to man's own attention. Where art thou? As he said to Adam in that garden while he was hiding. God already, already knew where Adam was, but did Adam really know where he was? Today, God is exposed to you where you are. He's exposed to you where you are. And he's already let you know you can be so wrong about what you think is right. You can be so wrong about what you think is right. But what I love about it is, though you're wrong about what you, you have been wrong about what you think was right, God has now shined the light in that dark place. Because this thing wasn't done in a corner. It wasn't, and it's not to be hidden. God wants you to know he wants you to be saved. He wants to save you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to rescue you. He wants to bring you all the way out. I hope you grab a hold to that today. I hope you grab a hold to that. Our praise and worship team is getting ready to come back. I hope you grab a hold to the word of God. And don't decide that I might as well stay like this. I've been like this all this time. Why stay in a way that was never chosen for your life? Why not experience the brand new? Why not experience the wonderfulness of God in your life? Why not? Some people proclaim and they say, you know, I'm, I'm this way, I'm going to die this way. But why? If you can change and be a better way and be a better person. And die in a better situation in the position. Because the way a tree falls, that's the way it's going to lie. And if I had the opportunity, and I was on my way to hell, and I know that Jesus stood in the road right before I got to the dead end, and said, turn around, because this is the dead end. And once you pass me in hell, you're going to lift your eyes. I would want to turn around. And go back the other direction. He's giving you that chance. And that opportunity. Right now. Turn around. Yes. Jesus is standing in the road. As he came. When Paul was on the road. To Damascus. He's trying to stop you right now. Mm -hmm. Before you meet your destruction. And your demise. Won't you turn. Yes. Won't you turn. And let Jesus save your life today. Amen. Our praise and worship team is getting ready to come back before you. We're going to ask if you would just go to your app, your Giveify app, your Cash app. Amen. That you may be a blessing to the ministry. I hope somebody still have your hands up in the air. Oh, surrendering over to him right now. Right now, right now, right now. I speak deliverance into your life. I speak deliverance I bind every stronghold of the devil right now in Jesus' name. The devil cannot have the victory over you any longer. Right now, I loose you from the chains in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory be to his name. Lord, I praise you and I thank you. You're such a wonderful God. Hallelujah. Go ahead to your cash app. You give the fire. Hallelujah. If you can, if you will. Amen. It be a blessing to the ministry as the praise and worship team come forth in another song. Amen. As we do our giving unto the Lord.
So glad. Amen. We love you all. Amen. Keep that in your heart and do remember it. But God loves you best. Be blessed in the Lord.